Hello and welcome to Tech Deals. Today is April 20th, 2018. Ryzen 7 2700X has launched along with the other CPUs, but today is all about the 2700X. In this video, I've got a couple of benchmark charts to show you and an unboxing of two X470 motherboards. This is the shortened version of the video. A longer full deep dive will be coming up in the next couple of days, but if you just want the short sweet version, you've come to the right place. Now, I am posting this video one day after the actual launch itself. I had to buy the CPUs myself because AMD did not sample me this time. Fair enough, but that's why I don't have a full review ready on launch day. That will be coming, as I said, and behind me back there, you can see the rest of the boxes because I do have all four CPUs and a deep dive into all four and comparisons with Intel processors will definitely be coming. The Ryzen 7 2700X has eight processing cores and 16 threads. It is a multi-threaded beast. 3.7 gigahertz base clock speed with a 4.3 gigahertz max turbo speed. That is a substantial improvement over the first generation. It's all core boost speed in my experience on the included stock cooler is 4.0 gigahertz. Yes, it finally comes with an included cooler and it's a good one. I do recommend that you use it. I don't think spending money on an aftermarket cooler is worth the money. It really is good and runs just fine at four gigahertz on all eight cores, 16 threads in full load. This is the new top end processor. There is no 2800X like there was an 1800X last time and all the chips come with coolers now, so that's a nice improvement. Now it does work on the existing motherboards. You don't have to replace your motherboard if you already have a 300 series board, but the 400 series has launched at least the X470. B450 boards are coming summer of 2018. It will be a number of months before those arrive. So if you want a lower end, lower cost chipset, it's still gonna be the B350 for a while, at least until the B450s come. Please note that if you have an older 300 series board before November of 2017, it will require a BIOS update before it will take one of the second generation Ryzen chips. However, if you buy a brand newly manufactured 300 series board today, it should work just fine out of the box. Motherboards made after November of 2017 had BIOSes that already supported these and were ready for them. They probably still have a BIOS update that's needed to be made, but they'll at least work out of the box. If you have a motherboard that is new old stock or perhaps dates from the summer of 2017, you'll need a first generation chip in order to update the BIOS. If you wanna be 100% sure and have no worries whatsoever, get one of the new X470 boards. And if you don't already own one, that's what I'd recommend. Before we go any further, let's take these X470 boards out of the box and we'll take a look at them and talk about them for a minute. We have a very nice MSI board. And we have a beast of an Asus Crosshair Hero 7 board. With the motherboards out of the box, it gives me a chance to briefly talk about price point and recommendations if you're buying a second generation Ryzen chip. This is the MSI X470 Gaming Plus. It is a $139 board, and that's the price point I think most people should be looking at. Now, you can find boards at around this price point from ASUS, MSI, Gigabyte, and ASRock in that roughly $150 price range. I do have a Gigabyte Aorus Ultra Gaming coming tomorrow or perhaps Monday, so I will be taking a separate look at that, but each of the companies has a board at that price point. I don't think most people should go over the $200 price point because at that point, you're spending a lot of money for things that most people simply don't need. This board here is pretty epic. This is the ASUS Crosshair 7 Hero motherboard. It is $280. And honestly, I think it's a waste of money for most people. I bought it because I'm using it on my test bench and for testing multiple CPUs, overclocking coolers, different graphics cards. It makes sense for somebody with a test bench that's gonna be playing around with their system a lot to have such a nice board. But for the average person, once you have it set up and running, frankly, the $150 boards are just fine. Now in this video, I'm only showing you benchmarks from the Ryzen 7, but I will be doing the Ryzen 5 2600X next. It is very similar to the 2700X with two major changes. Six cores, 12 threads, instead of eight cores, 16 threads, and both the base and the turbo clocks are 100 megahertz slower. The reality is the game performance numbers I'm about to show you are gonna be nearly identical between the 2600X and the 2700X. The major difference comes in non-game applications and multitasking, content creation, uh, software development, 
3D animation, that sort of thing. But for gaming, at least today in 2018 and well into 2019 and perhaps 2020, there will be almost no gaming performance difference between these two CPUs. There is a $100 price difference between them, but again, I'll cover the 2600X more in the next video. The benchmark charts I'm about to show you compare the i7-8700K against the Ryzen 7 2700X. Both are running at stock speeds. There is no overclocking going on. Both are using DDR4 3200 MHz RAM. And this is just a subset of the test that I have coming up in the next full review where we do a little bit deeper dive. Now it is true that the i7-8700K can be overclocked, but it's expensive to do so because you need heavy aftermarket cooling. We'll take a look at overclocked results results in the next video. Now before I show you the charts, here's the short version of the differences between these CPUs as they come out of the box. The i7-8700K is faster at 1080p gaming, 5-10% to in most cases, sometimes up to 15% faster in terms of frame rate if you give it an amazing graphics card. With lower end graphics cards, there's virtually no difference. At 1440p and 4K, there is almost no gaming difference, which I'll show you here in just a minute. Content creation and multitasking, on the other hand, the Ryzen wins that because, of course, it has 25% more cores and 25% more threads. The all-core turbo speed of the 8700K is 4.3 gigahertz versus 4.0 on the Ryzen, so there is a 300 megahertz clock speed gap. No, you really cannot overclock the Ryzen 7 2700X to 4.3 on all the cores. A few people will be able to, but most will not, so plan on it being a little bit slower on a per-core basis. And with that being said, on to the benchmarks. This first chart we're going to look at frankly sums up everything you need to know in one go. The Cinebench R15 is a purely multi-threaded test that demonstrates the true power difference between these two CPUs. On the left, you see the multi-threaded difference, 1809 versus 1408. Again, these are stock clock speeds. This is the pure multi-threaded power of eight cores, 16 threads at four gigahertz versus six cores, 12 threads at 4.3 gigahertz on the i7-8700K. I am for the first time ever including single threaded results as well. And you can see here that on a per core basis, the 8700K is in fact faster, 204 to 179. As I said before, it is true that on a per core per thread basis, the i7-8700K is faster, but it's not hugely faster. They are really, really close. And anytime you can actually use all the cores of the Ryzen, it simply crushes the 8700K. As I mentioned before, the Ryzen 5 1600X will be really close in performance to the i7-8700K. I'll show you that in the next video. But if you want multi-threaded power, there it is. Another thing I don't do very often in these videos is show percentage charts. In multi-threaded performance, the Ryzen 7 2700X is 28.5% faster than the i7-8700K. In single-threaded performance, it is 12.25% slower than the i7-8700K. Will that 12% be noticed? In general, that'll translate to between a 3-7% to real-world performance deficit in anything that simply doesn't use 8-core 16 threads. This next chart perfectly exemplifies the challenge of using all 8 core 16 threads. This is 7-zip. It is a file compression decompression utility. Unlike the previous one, this is a real-world program that you might actually use to compress and decompress files. When compressing files, the Ryzen 7 2700X is no faster than the i7-8700K. It simply cannot fully utilize all those cores and threads like it can in decompressing. Look at the monster performance difference in decompressing. Decompressing files, it absolutely uses those cores and threads, which is why you see the huge difference. This is why, and if you look on the right chart, the total rating, it exemplifies the average that you're going to see. Sometimes you'll use them all, sometimes you won't. The truth of the matter is, in real world, the eight cores is nice to have, but the average person doesn't really need it today unless you're heavy into content creation or multi-threaded workloads. This is the percentage chart showing compressing with no difference, decompressing with 33 and a third exactly percentage difference, and then 15.88% in terms of the total rating, which basically combines the two. 
Moving on to Game Benchmarks Far Cry 5. This is the first time I have ever shown Far Cry 5 benchmarks on my channel. There will be some new games coming up. I'm rotating through my various games that I include in benchmarks. I've included 1080p, 1440p, and 4K here. We do have a GTX 1080 Ti. It is the Zotac Amp Extreme Edition that I recently covered on my channel. 1975 megahertz clock speed out of the box. It's one of the fastest out of the box 1080 Ti's I have ever tested. Notice at 1080p, we see a reasonable performance difference between the two CPUs, but at 1440p, it's much less so, and then at 4K, there's basically no difference. This is a trend you will see over and over at 1080p if you want high refresh rate gaming, yes. An i7-8700K is faster than Ryzen, and these are stock clocks. Overclocked to 5 gigahertz, the i7-8700K will be even faster. If 144 frames per second gaming is important to you at 1080p, the i7-8700K is still the best choice. Having said that, please note, if you have a 100 hertz or slower monitor, then you might as well buy a Ryzen. It costs less, either a Ryzen 72700X or a Ryzen 5 2600X. The percentage charts simply put into illustrative form the differences between the various resolutions and these CPUs. Yes, at 1080p, we have an average of about a 20% performance difference. This is fairly healthy, all things considered. Please note that this is with a $1,000 GTX 1080 Ti. Put a GTX 1070 or 1060 on here and the differences will be smaller. And I will show that in upcoming benchmarks because not everybody's gonna put a 1080 Ti in their system. If you're not going with a 1080 Ti, really the i7-8700K is somewhat wasted. At 1440p, you need the 1080 Ti for the high frame rates in general. And at 4K, it's virtually required for a game like Far Cry 5. Not all games, mind you, I recently did GTA 5 and showed you that on a much lower end card, but for Far Cry 5, Assassin's Creed Origin, etc., yes, you want the best. Moving on to Forza Motorsport 7, assuming I'm pronouncing that correctly, at ultra detail, there is very, very little performance difference between these CPUs. In fact, in some respects, the Ryzen is better because it has higher minimum frame rates. I actually went back and double checked this and ran it twice. I really did get the lower minimums on the i7-8700K versus the Ryzen 7 2700X. Some games, Far Cry 5, really like Intel CPUs. Other games, such as this one, really like the Ryzen CPUs. Now that Ryzen has been out a year, more and more games are starting to take advantage of the newer architecture and design, and thus you see results like this. Now, please note this is ultra detail, and I really did crank everything to the max, with the exception of MSAA, which is just an absurd performance killer, but everything else was manually tuned. I am aware you have to go in and check the items. Nothing was left at dynamic. And I bring this up simply to show you that 1080p and 1440p are really, really close. But across the board, you're seeing basically the same frame rates, except the minimums, which are better on Ryzen. Moving on to the percentage charts, you can see here quite plainly that the i7-8700K is 2-3% to faster in averages, but way slower in terms of minimum frame rate. 17-15% to slower at the 1080p and 1440p. Not every game is in fact going to be faster on an 8700K, although at the moment, most will. And again, it can be overclocked, but at great expense in terms of cooling, power, heat, etc. The next game I want to show you is Assassin's Creed Origins, another game that I've not covered very much on my channel, and this sort of returns to the Far Cry 5 results, with the i7-8700K definitely being faster, although not by as large of a margin at 1080p, a smaller margin at 1440p, and basically no margin at 4K because we're completely GPU limited. Now, I did test these at high detail, not ultra detail. At ultra detail, frankly, they would all basically be the same result because we'd be totally GPU bound. Some people may say, well, why didn't you do low detail? Because nobody builds this kind of computer to play at low detail. Who cares what the result is? You're just not going to do it. You're going. Anybody buying a 1080 Ti and a Ryzen 7 or i7 is going to be playing at least at high detail. So it's a compromise choice designed to show a reasonable balance of performance versus what you're really going to do with a computer that, frankly, is going to cost you over $2,000 by the time you're done building it. 
On the percentage chart, you can see we have just under an 8.5% difference at 1080p average, a 6.5% difference 1440p average, and basically a rounding error at 4K. Again, the i7-8700K is faster, but what are you paying to get there? The Ryzen 7 2700X crushes it in multi-threaded performance, it comes with a cooler, it costs less, the 8700K does not. Frankly, for most people, the Ryzen 7 2700X or the Ryzen 5 2600X I think is the better value for the money versus the i7-8700K. Now, I do like the i7-8700K. My streaming machine is an 8700K. Would I buy one today? Yeah, I'd really look long and hard at the Ryzen's before I did that. They're just really good value for the money. And so there you have a preview of the benchmarks to come in the full video. There will be more. I will take a look at overclocking in the future, but I do caution you that while the i7-8700K will go to five gigahertz on all six cores, 12 threads with high-end cooling, the Ryzen 7 2700X most certainly will not. In fact, 4.5 is not remotely realistic no matter what cooling you put on a short of liquid nitrogen. That being said, in most situations, the perceptible performance difference in most tasks is very minor between these CPUs. There is an edge for multi-threaded applications on the 2700X, and there's an edge in single core applications and 1080p gaming on the i7-8700K. They're both very competitive, but I'd like to point out to you that the i7-8700K costs more and includes no cooler. You still have to buy a cooler. Whereas the Ryzen 7 2700X, with its additional cores, is more future-proof, includes an excellent cooler, and is installed on a platform that still has three years left in it. Next year, we'll see yet another incompatible chipset from Intel, whereas the AM4 platform and your new X470 board should last you till at least 2020. That is definitely a plus in the Ryzen side of things. If you like the results in gaming that you see today, but you don't want to spend as much, again, Ryzen 5 2600X for $100 less will give you almost the same results for a little bit less money. Although I don't know that I'd want to spend $150 on that board, you might want to either wait for the B450s or get yourself a B350 if you're going to get a Ryzen 5. Like this video if you like it, share it with your friends if you loved it. Remember to subscribe to my channel with the big huge red button directly below. Questions and comments in the comment section. And as always, check out the links in the video description. Links to all the items I've shown you today to both Amazon and Newegg will be down there. Those are affiliate links. They do support the channel. I did have to buy these CPUs, which is why this review was not published on launch day. If you want to support the channel and you want to see my analysis and benchmarks, please consider using those links when shopping. It really does make a difference. Links to my social media, Patreon, and PayPal will be down there if you're able to support as well. I'd be greatly appreciative. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.